Hey, how's it going everybody? I'm Artorigold, and today I'm going to do another Advance Wars by Web video. So, I will be playing as Hawk, and the enemy will be Sasha. This will be on the map 1 vs. 1 uh, Verdun, Verdun, not sure how you say that. And the map is kind of simple. Um, one of the things that I dislike about this map is there are no mountains. Um, there are plenty of objectives. You have the uh, lab and the two comm towers, which are pretty great. Pretty nice focal points to playing around in the center of the map. But I'm pretty sad there's no mountains to play around here. Um, that's definitely something that is missing on this map, in my opinion. Um, this is a fog of war map, so mountains can come in pretty handy. You can put infantry on there to go ahead and scout, especially in the late game. when you are going to be running out of your recons, most likely. So with that, let's get into the COs. So I decided to create this game, and I wanted to play as Hawk. I wanted to play a higher tier Kind of game not exactly tier zero but still pretty up there and hawk's real big benefit is that he has no downside and his upside his day-to-day -day passive bonus is he just gets 10 percent straight attack damage which is really effective and his power and superpower basically drains one hp and heals one hp every enemy and ally unit on the map and his uh, ultimate power uh, doubles that to go to two so the one thing about him is he doesn't really have a weakness. He has a lot of strengths. He's pretty good. He's pretty amazing, in fact. His real big downside here, and you'll see it, is that his power takes forever to build. I never get his superpower. And there's also another reason for that, which I will get into, and that is Sasha, a lovable waifu. I am in love with her. I love her. She's mine. She's my waifu. You cannot have her. So she's amazing. I absolutely love Sasha. I'm going to have to do some Sasha games in the future. And Sasha pretty much hard counters me the entire game. All because of her little power. Um, but before I get into, it, into that, let's talk about her passive. So her passive lets her receive plus 100 income or gold, whatever you want to call it, each property. Now, the thing that's amazing about that is essentially on these maps where you have tons of properties, if she has 10 properties, it's basically like getting... A thousand gold every turn, right? So that's a free entire income of a, of a benefit of an entire property. So for every 10 properties, it's like getting another free property. And for five, then, I mean, just having five properties, it already puts you at a huge advantage. Um, it's really great for the eco game, and she doesn't really have a downside. Um, she's really great for getting that extra benefit. She's not going to be as rich as Colin would but she is going to give you uh, that extra money without any of those downsides, downsides, which I really love about her. And another big thing about her is her regular power basically cancels your enemy's power. And this is devastating because as you can see, uh, Market Crash, it takes very little in order to get it. And she uses this power like four or five turns or four or five times against me throughout the game. It's a lot. I only get to use my power once, and it's my little power, and it's only because she kind of like messes up with it. So this is one of these things that's very devastating, and Sasha really hard counters Hawk, making sure that he can't use his power like ever if played properly. And she does make one little mistake um, with her power, which we can get into, um, and one of the reasons that is is because uh, her power reduces the enemy's power based on her funds and how much funds she has. So when you use this ability, you want to use it either at the beginning of your turn or kind of maybe even mid or later of your turn to guarantee that you don't have the power. But you should never use it at the end of your turn after you've spent your money and bought things. Because once you do that, that money could have gone towards your power and it's a complete waste. Also, using your power gives you a 10% attack and defense bonus. So using this power at the beginning of the turn is what you want to do for that little bit of an upgrade. But, unfortunately, if you do that, you also risk at doing it a little too early, and by doing too much damage to the enemy, you can actually give him the power back, kind of making your power pointless, because at that point, you've just rebuilt a lot of it back. And that's exactly what she does to me later in the game, which allows me to get my power. Um, she also has a superpower. You don't use it too much, Asasha, um, but what it does is, is I think you receive funds equal to like a certain amount of damage that you deal to the enemy. So basically you use it and then when you attack someone, you get money for it. It's okay, it's not great. Um, her little power is just better. You can just spam that, it, it's way better. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so with that being said, I think that's about it. Oh, one other thing before I get started, if you have any replays of yourself um, for games that you've played and you want me to make a video about it, send some of those replays my way. I will be more than happy to take a look at it and we can make a video out of it if you'd let me and it might be a lot of fun. And uh, these games take a long time to play. They go over the course of many days and sometimes they even bug out. I had an instance where a Jake player was using the old interface so the replay didn't work properly when I tried to make a video of it and it just didn't work out so well for me. So yeah, if you have replays, send them to me, message me. I am Artorigold. Um, you can also send them to artorigold at gmail.com or maybe just in the comment section. Um, but yeah, I'm also going to add this little thing here, which I think is kind of neat. Bam. You can look at me talk. How fun is that? All right. So let's go ahead and get into the beginning. So my first little plan, of course, was to try and get the base. Might have to refresh uh, the page here. It looks like the replay always gets buggy for some reason when you do this. So anyway, so the very first thing that I'm going to do and prioritize and you'll see it right here, I'm going to go for the base and capture it, which is something that you should always do, because now you're going to be able to pump out three infantry every turn. In the early game, you should always focus on infantry and focus on capturing as many properties and including the properties in the mid. And here's the real first big mistake of Sasha. She goes for the airport first instead of the factory. Now, I understand maybe you wanted to send uh, two infantry and get each, but that wasn't what happened. She went right for the airport instead of the factory, and that is a big mistake. So she has one infantry right there. You know, she's going second. She gets a free infantry. She could have easily captured that base and get a really big infantry wave going, but instead goes for the airport. Now, what purpose is the airport going to have on the second or third turn whenever you capture it? It's going to give you, what, access to a transport copter, maybe, if you have that money? You only have 3,300 each turn. You're going to have to buy two infantry. I don't think you're going to be able to get a T-copter and get a bunch of other infantry with it. You might as well get the, th the factory and start unloading as many infantry units as possible. Because, look, now I'm going to be going for the base and getting it before her... As I, of course, spend more infantry to start sending them out. And just now, she's starting to capture this when I'm getting mine. It, it's just really confusing. Now, if you want to rush a transport copter, maybe I could see that. But it's still too early. You definitely want to get infantry first. You want to get a good amount of waves of infantry out before you start even thinking about the airport. The f this is a really big, like, this This snowballs for her pretty bad. And I definitely have an infantry advantage and a capture advantage in the early game. So what I'm trying to do here on my turn is capture this base and send my infantry to the comm tower. That's my priority. I'm going to go ahead and make my way towards that comm tower, and you'll see that he takes forever to get to his. He finally gets the airport. I'm actually going to wait on my airport because it's not a big concern for me. I could have captured it last turn if I really wanted to, but I'm deciding to opt towards the properties in the middle before I worry about the airport because I know that I'm not going to be getting a lot of battle copters or transport copters. In fact, I'm actually going to get an APC unit this game, and the APC unit is really effective and it helps keep me, um, like, basically winning on the infantry versus infantry and capture game, I definitely win that over him because I have an APC unit and he doesn't have a T-copter or uh, an APC. And here you can see right here, he has the airport. Look at his money. Right, 7,000? Infantry? Infantry. He has 5,000 right now. He has the airport available. A T-copter only costs 5,000. He could easily buy a T-Copter right now, and that would be a great buy, in my opinion. Because, well, I mean, he got the airport so early, you might as well take use of it. He has 5,000. He could do that right now. He decides to save it. But why? Why would you do that? You have the early airport. You have the 5,000 gold. You can get a T-Copter. Transport units are so good, especially on maps like this, where there are objectives in the middle that you want to get to, um, as quickly as you can before the enemy team can start interrupting you. So we're going to go ahead and keep moving my infantry forward 
And now I'm finally going to start to work on the airport now that I have a little bit of funds. I'm not too worried about getting air units. I'm definitely the kind of player that would prefer to get an anti-air before I get a battle copter. It's cheaper, it's more effective, and it fully outright kills a battle copter. Um, so on this turn, now that I have a little bit of money, I'm going to keep getting the infantry out there, but I'm going to get recons. Recons are very effective in Fog of War. You don't really need to, you know, have me explain it. You just get that fast movement. You can interrupt the captures. That's exactly what you want. On. And at the same time, it gives you tons of vision. And in this game, I've been playing a lot of Sonyas on AW by D, Advanced Wars by Web, AWBW. I've been playing a lot of that. And so I've been playing against a lot of Sonyas in Fog of War, and a lot of them have uh, recons with a lot of vision. And I can't state just how amazing it is to have vision of Fog of War. The information on whether you should push or not push is, is huge. So here, let's look at his money and what he bought. He's basically doing this kind of the same thing that I'm doing, except he's a little bit behind in the capture game. I would definitely put that because he doesn't he didn't get that factory. So as you can see, I have eight infantry. He only has seven. I have nine units. He has seven. And that's because he didn't get that base. He could have easily had more. He could have had two more turns of infantry by now, but he didn't, which is a big blunder. Look, two more infantry in the early game. That's two more property captures. That's 2,000 more gold plus 200 because of her passive. So we're going to see her continue to move forward just like I did, but this time she's actually going to spend her money. She has 10,000. She saved all that money, that precious 5,000 money, to buy what? Two recons. It's not terrible. I mean, she saved the money and she used it all on two recons. And two recons are pretty good. But why would you... Like, it just doesn't make sense to me, though. Because you could have just gotten a T-copter by now. One of these infantry could have been in a T-copter instead of, you know, clusterfucking this little bridge area right here. That's going to be kind of a pain to move through. And instead, your T-copter could probably be, like, right here. And you can have an infantry in the mid going for a con tower before I'm even at mine. So, yeah, I just don't agree with that double recon. I mean, I think getting two recons is good, but looking at what she could have done instead, I don't agree with it. I think transport units on maps like this with objectives, clear, strong objectives, such as the comm towers, um, it just makes more sense to get that kind of uh, transport unit out there as, uh, as soon as you have the money for it. I do understand the recon is cheaper, so it's good if you want to do a cheaper buy. Um, I'm a perfect example of why I went for a recon and double infantry is because if I went for APC, I wouldn't have had that kind of money. But I do believe I get an APC this turn. Oh no, that comes up the next turn. So I use all of my money. Oh, I see why I don't get an APC. I have 6,000 gold. And the reason why I don't get an APC, because then I wouldn't be able to use every single factory. So one of the things, if you have three factories and you prioritize getting all three factories, make sure you build from all three factories. You have zero gold. I do want an APC unit, but the APC unit isn't worth it because it's a thousand extra gold and that means one less infantry. In the early game, the infantries are extremely valuable because you will not be building that much infantry in the late game. In fact, if you're playing properly and playing well and using your money right, you wouldn't want to get the infantry in these three factories. Instead, you'd rather get tanks. So we'll go ahead and see, instead of capturing these two properties on this infantry, I'll skip it and go for that comm tower. Um, I could have gotten this a little bit earlier, but I believe I needed uh, the early game property right here in order for that extra thousand gold to help fund building all these units. So that was one of the reasons why I um, did that. Capturing some early game properties is a good way to make sure you can build units each turn on each basis. And again, recons are a really good purchase. I usually like to have two or three recons, especially when you have three different areas to fight. The bot, mid, and top lane. Kind of is what I'm going to say about it. Mid, top, and bot. Kind of some MOBA references with that, and I think that's okay. I think it works pretty well. So here we're going to see he gets his infantry finally moving out, but his infantry is still quite a little bit behind on this comm tower, um, and nowhere near this one, but I'm also not that anywhere near it as well. Uh, but I am trying to send my recon as quickly as possible to this recon because, uh, or to the comm tower. I'm trying to send my recons as quickly as possible to the comm towers to try and scout him out and make sure that he can't cap it before me. So here he has a bit of an advantage with his battle units being out a little bit, a little bit sooner than him. His recons are out there more while mine is still being built. So he has one extra turn of a recon's mobility. 
which is pretty good. But here's another error. You see how he spent his money? He has 8,000, buys three infantry, has 5,000, could easily buy a T-copter right now, but chooses not to. And I think he should have. I really do think he should have bought a T-copter there. I would have helped him a lot in the capture game, which he really needed help in the capture game. Over here, I'm going to just continue moving all my units forward, and instead of capturing these properties, I'm going to skip these ones and go straight for that comm tower. Here's where the beloved APC comes out. Um, there's a lot of benefits and probably a lot of arguments that can be made of the value versus an APC and T-copter. Um, the big thing that I like about the APC unit, it is much tankier and easier to block, and people don't go for it. And it's great because you don't have to worry about it that much, and maybe people will kill it, but it's still going to take a lot of attacks. Um, and that's a lot of value because you can use it to block all of your ranged units. Now, a transport copter has a lot more mobility, and I really like that. However, the big downside is it runs out of fuel a lot quicker, and it is very easy to kill with an anti-air. So people, if they see a transport copter um, in range of an anti-air, they'll probably take that trade 100% of the time, because that's pretty worth it. That's like a free kill. But an APC unit doesn't have that same vulnerability. And so that's kind of why I really like to have the APC unit. It, it just has a lot more... Um, durability than a transport copter does. Um, so yeah, this APC unit is, I'm basically going to ferry units all to this top side. I'm basically just going to send this APC all to the top side in mid, and occasionally I'm going to use it to block my ranged units in the mid, which helps me out a lot because I get a rocket that is insane value later in the game, and we'll go over that later. See him capturing. And here's another big mistake right here. Um, he has his infantry capturing this property instead of continuing to move towards this comm tower. Perhaps he felt like it was safe because his recon didn't see anybody on it, but as you can see, it's just in the forest right out of his vision. And so I am able to capture this. It doesn't go uh, without a fight, but I am able to capture this because he, his army um, isn't able to really back him up because they're busy capturing the properties. And I actually chose to skip these properties and instead try to go for the Calm Tower first. And one of the reasons why that is really, really good is because Calm Tower gives me a straight 10% attack power bonus on top of my already, already powerful 10% attack power, making me straight up just have 20% attack power bonus on all of my units with no downside the entire game and that really shows just how powerful that is on hawk i don't get my power really but i get it like once but like i don't need my power because i just have a straight up 10 percent attack power from this comm tower so here i'm going to keep continuously sending my recon down here these forests act as a great way uh for me to hide in the early game and get a bunch of vision and without mountains to block, the forests are your only real form of cover. And this recon is single-handedly responsible for making sure he does not touch this comm tower, even though he is closer to it. Kind of like how uh, this map side is mirrored on this one, right? It's a, it's mirrored, right? He's going to get to the bottom side quicker than I get to, than he gets to the top side. And um, that's why I wanted to send my recon down here as opposed to sending it there. If I wanted my recon to be on the top side of the map, I would have built it here to go down there first. But of course, I went on the bottom purposely to get to that comm tower because I knew he was going to get to it first. But if I got an early game recon in there quick enough, then I could probably stop him. I don't necessarily even need to capture the comm tower. I just need to get one and make sure he doesn't get one as opposed to me getting both. Getting both is ambitious. So I am in fact going to give up the lab. I don't really care for the labs. The only thing a lab does is it lets you build a bomber, which I don't think is ever really worth it. Something we will get into later, that may be foreshadowing. But the lab is just not worth it compared to the comp towers. Comp towers are way more valued than the lab, unless the lab maybe had some other units that um, allowed you to build. But in this case, and in most cases, it's usually a bomber is the only thing that's ever really so now I'm going to continue capturing the properties in the mid. My fat APC unit, I'm going to use the movement to get him out there and then continuously put people in there. Just keep ferrying, ferrying people forward because the biggest weakness of the infantry is, of course, their slow movement. Mech units also share that even more so. So here I didn't see his recon. I saw nothing up here. 
I saw nothing over here. I saw everything down here, so I was like, I'm going to go for this. He's not even down here. If he does try to touch this, I can stop it. And I want to keep this recon in this nearby area to try and help defend it. Instead of using the recon normally to uh, harass, I'm actually going to use it um, to help defend the comm tower because that's my priority at the moment. So I have 10,000 each turn, and he has 10,000 as well, plus the extra 1,000 from the passive. So the eco lead here is pretty devastating, but I don't believe he's been spending his money pretty wisely. It's been pretty poor. He's had a lot of choices to buy transport, uh, transport copters and chose not to, and I think that was a big problem for him because, as you can see, I'm in my capture game is going to get sped up a lot better than him, especially on the top side of the map because of this APC unit. Um, and of course, I bought a tank unit, and I used a tank, and with that, I didn't have much money. I had 4,000, so it was either a tank and a recon or a tank and two infantry. So obviously, I'm going to go with more infantry, especially since I have the APC unit. That makes the infantry purchase um, better. So with here, he's going to go ahead for the obvious play. He interrupts my comm tower, finishes captures, and here he sends this recon towards the mid. For some reason, he really wanted to get the lab. He had a big focus on the lab, and he wanted to get the bomber. And he does buy a bomber. And it does a little bit. It does a little bit. But when it gets killed, it is devastating. So is it worth it? 26,000 to get killed by an 8,000 anti-air? Hmm, we'll find out. Tune in for the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. So... Continues to move forward. I believe he sends this tank towards the mid, or does he send it towards the comm tower, I believe? And uh, here you start to see he has a big property and income lead now because it is Sasha. She will maintain a huge eco lead over me for a little bit. And she buys a battle copter. Um, an early battle copter can be good. Um, I do think the battle copters in the early game are quite good because people don't want to buy anti-air units too early. And it does take a lot longer for an anti-air to reach the middle of the map than it does for a battle copter uh, because they have way more movement and they aren't slowed down by terrain such as forests, whereas anti-air have, uh, have to deal with that. Even though the roads um, can speed you up, the roads are in this weird diagonal kind of formation, so it doesn't really help that much unless I was playing like as cold. So here I'm going to take my recon and put it on the comm tower. So even if he does have a tank or he's trying to trade, um, I'm going to delay it by as much as possible by putting my unit on the comm tower for the extra defense, and I'm able to stop him from even capturing. If this unit was actually able to get on the comm tower, then it would be a very difficult different story because then he could capture and then join with another infantry and continue capturing it in my recon would just probably not be not have been able to do anything but because i'm able to plant myself on here and get that extra defense the infantry can do literally nothing to me um, and even the recon won't be able to trade that well against me either because the defense value plus my extra attack bonus makes it kind of difficult for him especially because he has to attack me from the roads with no defense or planes for one star which still isn't going to be able so here i'm going to finish capturing and i'm going to try and attack his recon because to me, this comm tower is really important. And although I could probably go for one of these properties, I see that the only thing that is in my vision is already captured. This is captured, and this is already captured. And I wasn't able to reach anything else. So I could have either put him in this forest right here, or I could have put him in this property. And yeah, I could have put him in that property, but I was pretty confident he wasn't there yet because I'm just, I just have so much vision here and I haven't seen anything. And this right here kind of confirms that he hasn't even touched this area yet. And he's just now capped this property. So I'm guessing he's probably just done the exact same right here. So I'm not even worried about that. I have time to get my APC and infantry over here to fight him off before he's able to capture anything. Um, so, but yeah, my biggest concern here is basically getting the comm tower. And here, as you can see, my APC comes in. Um, very, very clutch because now I capture this and it's only got 5 HP remaining capture and 5 HP on here. Now, if I if I live from the 6 HP recon, which I'm pretty sure I do because the extra defense and the weakened recon makes it a lot easier for me, now I can merge. So that's going to be huge. So this is going to be like guaranteeing the comm tower. And the APC, without the APC unit, it wouldn't have been as possible. 
So APC and transport units are extremely valuable, guys. I cannot stress enough that having them is really helpful. Um, personally, I have a preference for APC units. If you like transport copters, that's all you, but you have to be a lot more worried about their vulnerability. But with APC, I don't care at all. They're tanky. They are extremely tanky. I'm not worried about them dying, and I use them to block all the time. So here I'm going to continue moving my infantry and my tank. I'm going to focus on getting my tank towards this comm tower in mid area, I believe. And now that I have all of my money, I had seven, four, and one thousand, and I spend it perfectly on a little bit of everything. Another recon to probably help with this because I knew um, that his recon was probably going to, or he would, his tank unit was probably going to come in and uh, either destroy and focus. I knew he was going to have tanks coming. There's no way he wasn't. I bought my first tank. He's definitely bought his first tank, right? Because he's uh, Sasha, and uh, Sasha has way more income. So I know that there's tanks already, and they're somewhere in this fog of war. I just didn't know if they would go for the top or the bottom. So another recon is really good because um, I don't really want my recon to die. Uh, recons are extremely good for vision and helps you a lot with planning your attacks and trading. And I knew that one of my recons was going to die eventually. Right? I'm using my recons extremely aggressively against his recon here to help secure the comm tower, which is very valuable, and also to help prevent him from getting this one. So either his tank is going to, you know, kill this re recon for this comm tower or the other comm tower. I'm not sure which one it is at this point, and this recon is basically just going to reinforce and replace whichever recon that inevitably dies from the tank. As I knew from the fog of war, they would have to be coming from some angle. I just don't know which yet. So here he moves it forward, and we're going to see him try to do some battle copter stuff. He sends it completely up north. But for some reason, instead of continuing this battle copter north, he basically trades uh, his tr he second thought. I don't know if he has a second thought or what, but he basically sends it all the way north and instead goes for the mid. It's a very strange movement with the battle copter. If he made this battle copter go all the way up north, and helped prevent me from capturing these properties, he would have been in a way better state. But instead, he sent it kind of in the mid area, and the battle copter, it does a little bit of damage, but I take care of it eventually with my anti-air. So here, he's kind of ignoring my recon. As you can see, he's just moving his infantry to the left here. And I guess I kind of agree with that because he can't do anything against that recon on that property. He has to get his tank over there, which it isn't there yet. And his battle copter isn't there yet either. So here he has a lot more money than me, as you can see, and he builds two tanks and a mech unit. Now, I like mech units. Guys, mech units are great. They're one of the best eco buys that you can have to trade with a tank. But what's the biggest weakness of a mech unit? Movement. And look how much movement this mech has to do to get anywhere on the front line. I mean, it moves at a whopping two spaces, right? One turn. Two. Three. Four. What is it? It moves one, two, right? One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Seven. Eight. It takes like eight turns for him to get like on the mid side of the map, basically, right? Because if you go diagonal, it's only one space, right? One, two, three, four, five. It takes like five turns for this mech unit to go here to the mid or like seven or eight turns to get like over here as a mech unit or up here as a mech unit. That is a lot of time. That 3000 gold is basically not being used at that point. You have seven turns of 3,000 gold just missing. It's not seeing any action. So what makes that weakness completely gone? Well, transport copters and APCs, of course. So if you're going to buy a mech unit, and he had a transport copter early on, like I said he should have, or he could even build one now, this mech unit, bam bam, can get in the transport copter and get there in two turns. It's just, it's a no-brainer. If you're going to build a mech on this map, you have to have an APC or transport copter. Have to. Or else this mech unit is not going to see the light of day. It's just pointless. So if you're going to buy a mech unit, make sure you have a transport to go with it. 
And since he didn't, I think this mech was a pretty boor, poor purchase. I think he should have built an infantry instead, because in that way it actually would have seen a little bit of action. Now, if you're going to build the mechs, that's fine, but make sure to have a transport ready for that mech. Um, you know, that, that is different depending on the map, but for this map, you're, you're going to want the transport. So here he sends the recon to try and go for that comm tower, and he does successfully, but I have not given up yet. I have a lot of infantry in the area, I have a recon, I'm going to continue fighting for that comm tower. And you're going to see that my 10% attack power comes in really well here as Hawk. I might not get my power, but just having a passive 10% attack and no downside, pretty good. So here I see him capturing, and I'm actually going to try and get off of this comm tower to delay it. I figured I have all of these reinforcements coming in, and even if he does capture it, it'll take two turns, and then my units can come in and prevent that. So instead, I'm going to delay his captures, which I think was a pretty good move, but it still sacrifices my recon completely. But because of it, it still makes him uh, lose an infantry because he's going to have to join, and it takes a turn of him losing a thousand one. So it's a pretty effective it's a pretty effective way of slowing people down. And it also forces him to um, to act upon it. Otherwise, this tank could have gone somewhere else and done damage to my capture game. And instead, it makes him focus on where the battle is and allows me to capture for free. So here I'm going to get my tank and recons, move every unit up, still waiting to get action. And my APC unit, as you can see, I move it back to get some more infantry and just keep moving it forward. And here, since that property is gone, my HP is a bit lower than that recon, I am instead going to do the same thing, make him lose an infantry to join and merge it, and also slow down his property. So I basically just get rid of 2,200 gold there by doing that. Slow him down and also make his battle units, um, I demand the battle units to be uh, spent, waste their turns and movement to deal with my recon, which hopefully will give me enough time to deal with this tower that I'm not that I'm now trying to capture so now he has to try and attack it with the recon but then this guy isn't going to be able to do that much damage to him if he does that or the weaker one goes to that comm tower and either one I just merge it but he has the battle copter which I think unfortunately is what now I wasn't expecting uh, the battle copter that early because I mean I always expect people to buy battle copters early that was a little too early um, and as you can see, I spend all my money, I finally start getting some ranged units out, which are great for hiding in these forests to help protect to help protect all of my comm towers and captures and properties here as I push him back. But I don't have the anti-air unit, and his battlecopter is a little annoying, because I don't have the anti-air yet. I believe I buy it next turn because I see the uh, battlecopter then. So here he's going to get rid of my recons with his tanks and battlecopter. And he's going to try to capture this comm tower, but I am able to pressure the comm tower back to make sure he doesn't get it because I have plenty of infantry in the area. Here you can see his battlecopter goes to town. Doesn't quite kill me with uh, that infantry, finishes off with the next one, and also delays my comm tower again. But here, this time, I finally have some tanks in the area. He might have gotten a really good first wave of attack on me there, like really good first wave of attack on me, and he's able to kind of push me back a little bit, but now all of my reinforcements are going to kind of come in and get some uh, better trades with him because Hawk just has a lot more attack power. So here you see he buys an anti-air a lot earlier than me, which is pretty amazing. Um, I'm going to say that I do get air units, but it takes me a while. I'm not fanatic of air units it takes me a while before i get them i usually wait and sit on them for a bit because they are expensive i'd rather get a tank than a battlecopter in the early game they're two thousand gold cheaper and i just think they're a lot sturdier i mean battlecopters are extremely sturdy but against other players who know how to play the game and a lot of people know about anti-air they're gonna have it and battlecopters aren't actually that sturdy because they die in one hit to an anti-air yeah, they're sturdy against everything else, but if you're expecting a player in Advance Wars by Web to not buy an anti-air, then you're fooling yourself. Everybody knows about anti-airs beating battlecopters, and everybody always tries to get an early anti-air out because of this. Um, it's just, it's how the meta game works. It's, it's, it's knowledge, as that one guy says in his videos. Um, 
So here I'm going to finally get my tanks into the action to protect myself getting this comm tower. And that was my big focus. I wanted this comm tower and I needed it badly. And also what you can see here is I'm actually winning in the capture game. I have 16,000 in properties. He has 15,400 and he's down in properties. That's from the bonus, right? I have 16 properties. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 14 properties, if I'm counting that right. Right? Yeah, I believe so. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, he has 14 properties. So, yeah, I'm actually beating him in the capture game and beating him in the eco as somebody that's not playing a Sasha. So that's crazy. Um, secondly, though, I would like to state that he has spent a lot of money on battle units more than me. He has been reckless with his spending. If you see, he has 70,000 to my 49,000. He has more units than me. He has a battle copter, anti-air, four tank, and I only have three tanks, one less tank, and I have one artillery unit. So he's got a lot more battling, a lot more battle power, and he has more recons than me. And he has more infantry, and he has a mech unit. The one thing that I have over him, though, is I have an APC unit, and I have more properties. So as long as I can maintain all of my properties and not lose any of them, I will slowly recover that eco, get my battle units in there into the action, and be able to trade better than him. The main advantage of Sasha is having that big eco and making sure you can't use power. And in this instance, she has less eco than me. She has the... the early game eco advantage but that early game eco advantage is all but lost because she didn't use her infantry properly she didn't get that apc unit she didn't get that t-copter when she could have she didn't send out the infantry to the properties in the middle instead she got a lot more of the properties here she could have been on this comm tower way earlier so she made a lot of those little errors and so her early game lead is still there but i'm still slowly about to overtake her now I have to make sure I trade efficiently with her and get the comm tower. Um, and the comm tower is going to help my trading um, infinitely. Way more value. So here, as you can see, I have all that infantry. I'm able to move them forward. Sorry, I'm adjusting in my seat and taking a drink here. Um, but as I do that, I'm able to continuously merge with it. And as you can see, I'm a full HP and I only need five in order to fully capture this. And the only thing he's got here to stop me is the battle copter and the one HP recon, but I got a full HP tank here. So this recon isn't an issue and neither is the infantry. The only thing I'm concerned with is the battle copter. So I'm gonna move all of my units forward that I can all in the back. And as you can see here, when I have an infantry that is low, what I'm doing here is I'm putting it in the forest. If there is a low HP unit that is not battle worthy anymore, put them in the forest so they can trap people in Fog of War, block. And in this case, I can also merge it with this comm tower if maybe he lives with like one HP or something, right? So that kind of doubles in that aspect. Um, but sometimes it's not always worth healing units because it takes a lot of money to heal them. If a unit is like an infantry, probably not worth healing. If it's a bigger unit, then it is worth healing because it's a lot of value that you put in, like, medium tank, for example. You really want to heal a medium tank. If the HP of the unit is, like, four, it's uh, really good. You can just put it on there for a turn and then get back into the action with six HP, even. Um, so just taking a small breather to reassess the damage, heal, and then get back into the action. Move back, move back in. Really effective. Um, with two HP units, eh, you really have to judge to see if it's worth spending all that time and money uh, of a of a like a two HP tank. Sometimes it's worth it. Sometimes it's not. If you have a good eco advantage, why not? Um, but you can also just use it in the forests to kind of block or protect your ranged units if you have any. So obviously, I'm going to send all my infantry at this comm tower to try and stop and delay that capture. Um, I'm not too concerned with my infantry dying and losing it because I know that's inevitable, but slowing this capture is more important to me. And just now I'm capturing these two properties and this property, which is going to further my eco lead over him because he still is just now capturing this one. It's unfortunate. I would have gone for him if I saw it, but he wasn't in the fog of war or he was hidden in the fog of war. And look at the APC doing work. And where is that APC going to go? right here he's going to drop off more infantry in this area 
to help protect uh, this comm tower and reinforce if he needs to. And I just now finally get my anti-air and another artillery. I get a lot of ranged units this game. I get a rocket later. That's also insane value. I love rockets. Rockets are an insanely good, um, very risky, but if you can protect them or keep it hidden in a, in a nice area on a map, it's super value. So here you're going to see he's going to try to push his infantry. He's going to go ahead and move that infantry there. But why? You have the ability to attack this comm tower unit with this infantry. But instead, he, he opts to do that one. It's a very strange decision. Here's another thing that that ruins for him, too. So, another thing that really sucks here. He didn't have vision of this unit. He didn't have vision of the tank either. But this is really unfortunate. So you see, he moves the infantry over here, and he gets vision of uh, of the tank, and is able to do damage to the tank, which is a really good trade. But he's not able to interrupt this. So, personally, one of, I don't think it would have mattered in this instance. It's hard to say. Actually, it definitely would. But what I always like to do, whenever possible... I want to I want to move my recons first. Moving your recons first allows you to get the information you need. So like for example, yeah, he has information here and maybe he needs this recon here. But if he moved his recon say upwards north and attacked this infantry on this comm tower for example, this would have been a good trade. He could have taken this recon, attacked that comm tower, not only weaken it, but also at the same time get vision of whatever is back here behind here because he has no idea there could be an artillery there he does he has no idea um and then it also might have been able to get let's see i'm here it might have been able to get this uh guy with his vision as well which meant he would have been able to interrupt this capture instead of sending this infantry here to scout these two units and, which also is devastating because he was about to capture this property, as you can see, he, he does this to get the vision. But why wouldn't he just send other units in there first? The recon was definitely what I would have tried to move over here first. I would have tried to move the recon over here, and then that should have been able to give me the vision that you needed. If that's not the case, I would have moved this infantry in the back, using its max range to attack here. And then I would have used this infantry to maybe move over here, to the left to get more uh, vision like this infantry for example i can move here to attack here this infantry i can move around and attack this guy so the way i would have done this move the recon first attack the comm tower probably if that didn't give me the vision i needed i would have moved this infantry here attack that comm tower gives me vision of the tank so then my battle copter can attack the tank and then if i really wanted to i could have stopped this capture to prevent that However, there's one thing that I would like to say. Him capturing a property as Sasha is more valuable than me capturing a property as Hawk. And why? Because I only get 1,000. She gets 1,100. So think about that. She gives up her 1,100 to stop my 1,000. That's not a very good trade. If I was Sasha, I would have kept my unit to finish capturing that property. It gives me an extra bit of funds. That's way more valuable as Sasha than it is for Hawk. She would be at 15,500. 15,500. That's an infantry every two turns. Or it could get and just kind of snowball into even more. 400. That's like, that's just, that's not, not really that much. 500 is huge. 400. That's going to take a long time before it builds up to be a, f a free infantry. But 500, that's a free infantry um, every two turns. So yeah, I would have valued capturing that property way more than interrupting that property because you would have been able to get this tank if you just used your movement on your vision units and infantry right here instead. Maybe they were worried about something being in this forest, but you have so much infantry in this area that you could scout that out, send these in too, and then be able to see this tank here. Taking this infantry off this property just to see this tank, which was what she was doing and thinking, was a very very bad decision. She could have gotten that vision in a lot of different other ways. 
And it's just not worth it. Again, she's losing out on extra funds. So she sends the tank over this way to attack the recon. That's full HP. Yeah, it does a little bit of damage. But personally, I don't think I would have gone for that because that's obviously overextending way too much. You have to know that there's units back here that are going to be in range. I mean, it's obvious, right? But this tank is going to take care of it. Now, instead of doing that with the tank, why not just use it to defend this comm tower? So, for example, I would have just actually attacked these infantry and tried to make sure that I could capture this guy for free. I want this comm tower. That's my priority. So I'm going to try to use my tank to keep these infantry off of it. Ideally, I'm able to put the, my tank in a way and position it in a way that gets rid of this and also kind of blocks it. So probably like right here or right here. Most likely right here. That's probably what I, I would have liked to see my tank and moved it right here to attack this infantry. Or I should have sent in this infantry here, attack that, and then see the vision. I might have been able to see something and then try to get my infantry and move these guys. So one of the things, I guess in general, that you can take away from this is when you're playing Fog of War, you should try to move your expendable units forward and your vision units forward first whenever possible so you can gain more information. And with that information, you can find yourself having more favorable trades, which is very, very key in a Fog of War game. So you're going to see him go for the recon, which that is a really good eco trade because not only does that weaken it, um, it also drains my eco because I now am forced to heal it, which I don't want to heal a recon, really. It's not worth it because recons are effective just for vision more than anything else. So here you see he uses the recon to attack there instead of up here. He knows that I have, I mean, I don't know. He's valuing this property, which I like, but... He used so many resources here, and I still have the full HP infantry. He's barely done any damage to this, and instead focused on the tanks instead, and focused on the recon instead. And if it was me, I would focus on the infantry on the comm tower and ignore the rest, because I find having um, that buff, I just value it so much more. I can send in reinforcements to maintain the buff and get the favorable trades later instead use these as pawns necessary for the key objective and then have that key objective which will help me trade better and regain my value and make sure I maintain that property is so much easier than um, in the early game. As the game goes on and on it's harder and harder to keep the properties. So in the early game this is the easiest and most vulnerable to take the properties. That's why I'm focusing um, all of my efforts and, efforts and energy to keep it aggressively by joining my units and um, yeah, I just don't see that same energy from him. Here he gets trapped. Um, this helps protect this property, so it gets capped, which is pretty huge for me. Trapping units is always a good feeling. I absolutely love it when you trap an enemy unit inside one of these forests in Fog of War. It feels really good. Um, so here he, he really focuses a lot on capturing this lab, and I pretty much let him keep this because I don't care about the lab. Um, I really don't. The lab doesn't have much value. You get a bomber from it. Big deal. Big deal. I don't value the bombers that much. They're great if you have a lot of money. They're great if you're calling. But I like playing lower tier COs. Um, I don't like playing the tier zero kind of games. Um, after you've played enough Kanbai versus Kanbai or Colin versus Colin, those type of matchups are extremely overpowered heroes like Grit who just spam artillery. You, you eventually get very bored of the predictable play style of a Grit who spams artillery against you. It's not that fun. So here you're going to see I have my tank in perfect, perfect area. Right on top of that property is exactly where you want to be for a trade. And I'm able to do some major damage to him as Hawk. Um, but I made a pretty big mistake here. Can you tell what it is before I did this attack? What did I not do? I didn't capture the comm tower. So I could have done way more damage against this tank, couldn't I? Oh, sorry, I could have done way more damage against this tank. That was a big mistake. So one of the things and one of the habits that you should always have, and trust me, I'm not the best player in the world. I'm, I feel like I'm a pretty good player, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm only, like, I don't even know who I am. Maybe I'll have to try tournament leagues and see what rating I get. I have no idea. But, you know, I'm not the best player in the world. I make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. And I think in a game like this, the player who really comes out on top is the one that makes the least amount of mistakes. 
And that's really what you got to focus on. Focus on not making mistakes rather than on making all the better plays. Like, oh, I'm going to make such good plays. Focus on just not fucking up. That's, that's also really good. There's kind of two different ways, if that makes sense. You can focus on being really good and making the right play, or just make sure you don't make the devastatingly bad play. That's kind of what I'm trying to teach here. So yeah, you should focus on, at the beginning of your turn, I think the things you should do in order is you should make sure to move your vision units first. But even before that, you should capture whatever you needs to be captured. Capture everything. Focus on everything that's in the process of captured, right? And capture everything, including comp towers. Then focus on moving your vision units and then focus on your favorable trades. So even though that was a really good trade, it could have been way better. So I see that. I guess it doesn't matter too much because I do get my tank in here to just finish off that tank. However, I probably wouldn't have lost 1 HP. Very likely I would have kept all my health. So here I'm moving all of my units in the back forward. And then I get my infantry to get some really good trades, aggressive trades on his comm tower, which is great. No comm tower for him because he uh, tried to use his tank to go for that recon. And then I quickly killed it. I mean, he sent that tank after a recon do what he did six damage and killed a recon with a tank big whoop i kill your tank back you kill my four thousand gold unit i kill your seven thousand gold unit really bad trade you do not be that aggressive that deep into the enemy uh backline like that against a recon what value is that look my recons uh, i still got a recon here mid it, it, it's pointless i don't uh, i don't care i get your tank that's way more value and here again my apc doing a lot of work, getting more infantry, and I'm going to send them right over to the right. And here, I don't have my anti-air yet. So I'm using my infantry in a manner that's going to try and trap this battle copter. That's my main objective here. Put these infantry all in these forests around here. I've already got these properties. Just make sure I have these infantry in these forests to either trap the battle copter, or if he tries to trade and with the battle copter on this infantry and capture it back, I can then take my infantry out of the woods and start attacking him so he isn't able to capture this property fast, and I'm able to stop him with these two infantry. So that's my goal with these infantry. They're not going to go for these properties yet. I'm instead going to try and defend these properties. And I'm getting some really nice aggressive trades on my infantry against his uh, infantry. His infantry um, are at a pretty big disadvantage because I now have 20% more attack than him. I'm also uh, fighting them from uh, from the city. I'm doing a lot of fighting from the cities. That gives me a huge advantage on the first attack. Um, the comp tower gives me a huge advantage and the hawk pass about bonus on it. And already you're going to start to see that even though he has more eco lead on me from this early game, it is slowly dwindling in my favor from every little trade. So here... I see the early battle copter. I'm going to go ahead and assume he has another one. So I'm focusing on getting some more anti-air units out. Just in case he also has some tanks that are able to trade my anti-air, I can have a backup. Anti-airs are just so good and so valuable. Um, not only because they kill battle copters of one hit, one hit, I can just leave them in a forest and wait for the battle copter the entire time, not make a move. Or alternatively, I can even use them to wipe up infantry very effectively. So here we're going to see him use the power. As you can see, I'm kind of close to my power, but because she has hers way quicker, it's going to be pretty devastating for me. And she uses the power uh, kind of oddly after she destroys, which I guess I kind of understand. She gives me, it takes away a bit more of my power by doing that. And she didn't necessarily need the attack to kill that. So it works out for her pretty well there to do that. The tank is dead, but I think it's glitched right now. Yeah, the replay's a little bug, buggy here. Okay, so it's at 5 HP. She goes straight forward for it. It's kind of ambitious because she doesn't have vision of these two squares. There could have been easily of something there blocking it, um, which is unfortunate that I didn't have anything. But again, we're going to see a massive mistake that she makes here, which she did with her tank the first time. She's sending her units way in too deep, overextending really aggressively into the unknown. She has to know by now that my anti airs have been built. So this 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 copter has killed, done a lot of damage, and it's been pretty effective. But why give it up for free? You have to know the anti air is coming by now. You might not have the vision of it, 
but you have to know i saw this battle copter what like two three three days ago right you have to have guessed i built an anti-air in those three days and moved it somewhere towards your battle copter you have to know that as an enemy player you have to predict that so as you can tell yes you get the tank and yes i was healing it at five hp that's pretty valuable and also there's a defense bonus that's pretty worth um the power used after you kill it which is great you get the free kill so then that makes means your power gets rid of more of the power because you know when you kill a unit you add more to my power um but because you use the power after that completely uh cancels that out and here i don't really agree with the trades here with the infantry i'm not really sure what the point of that was as you can see he suicides one infantry and then attacks an infantry on a comm tower so you have a 3 HP infantry, you have an 8, oh my infantry just died actually, just kidding. <laughs> okay, it's glitching out, the replay's uh, having a glitch in the system, I don't know what's going on there. But you see I have my infantry was at full HP, his was at 8. So an 8 HP infantry attacking a full HP one, is, this is such a mistake, it's 8 HP, it goes down to 4 after the attack, 7. 3 HP on that comp tower. Suicide's in it for 2 damage. That infantry could have just been used to block, or you could have even used to merge. Both would have been way better in my opinion. And you do get this guy off the comp tower, but you can't capture it. So what's the point? Sure, you got the infantry off of it, but where's the follow-up? Expending that many resources in unfavorable trades just to get a guy off of a property, you have to be able to have a follow-up and capture it. So what I would have done, obviously, I would have used the Battlecopter to go after that instead. I don't believe my anti-air would have been able to capture or it wouldn't have been able to get to that guy, but I would have to see. I can't see his I can't see his movement for some reason because he's not a fog of war. But um, I'm pretty sure the anti-air would not have been able to make it. If I put my, my Battlecopter and just attack that infantry, and then sent the infantry into attack, and then I would have had the leftover infantry to capture it, that would have been the much better play. But instead, he throws it away. And so this is kind of what I, what I, why I enjoy not building Battlecopters, is because they always get the anti-air as well. So the anti-air is just not as much value if I don't build as many air units. And if I had a T-copter doing this instead of the APC, then this would have given this even more value. Another reason why I prefer the APC over the T-copter. And also, the Battlecopter is extremely expensive. If you look at um, how much money you save by building tanks every turn instead of a Battlecopter, you save 2,000 gold every turn you get a tank over a Battlecopter. And eventually that 2,000 gold really really is more effective and racks up into more infantry and into additionally more uh more units that you can make instead so i value that way more than a battle cop battle copters die way to die way too easy i'm um, here my infantry are doing a great job at um stalling and trapping units in the forest which is exactly what i'm trying to do to waste their time rather than trying to go and overextend. Because overextending for these properties is not always worth it, especially when this comm tower is in the area and captured. If I try to overextend these units down here, these are the only units I have in the area. My main force is in the mid, a little bit in the top. So if I just overextend with these units to capture, they die. Not worth it. So I want to keep them kind of hidden and trade better with his infantry. He does get a good uh, hit on there. Here he gets a good, decent trade with that tank, but he should know by now that my tank is right there because he tried attacking it earlier. Moves everything forward. Um, That was a stupid trade. I don't think you should ever attack a tank with an infantry at 4 HP like that. That's not worth it. That's Maybe you could get lucky if you're... I mean, you had the 10% from your power, but you don't have the comp tower, so... Uh, you should have seen the damage numbers. That wasn't worth the luck roll, in my opinion. But maybe if you just put it there to block instead and have a 10 HP infantry to block, probably would have been better. Or have the infantry in the forest to trap would have been better, in my opinion. Just drained HP for no reason. That's a good trade. I really like that. 
trying to go after the lab. I don't value that property. Personally, if I were him, I would have spent all the, uh, the, the time and resources that he put into the lab, I would have put onto the comm tower instead. Here, I'm going to put both of my artilleries in the forest to help set them up in a safe location. They have decent range. Uh, okay, so if the battlecopter was right here on the comm tower, I would have been able to kill it. But if you put the battlecopter here on that trade earlier, like I was talking about, he would have been able to keep it safe. So that would have been the best play for him. Put the battlecopter here and attack before using all the infantry. So here, because I have 20% attack power, I'm going to use my infantry aggressively to try to trade against his infantry now that they weren't able to get that many good trades on me. And here, I'm just going to focus on not capturing and instead weaken his infantry so he can't capture it. Blocking the comm tower at the same time doing damage is going to be more valuable than capping it. Because, because I know I'm not going to really capture it. It's There's way too many units in the area. But what I can do is just harass his infantry and make him lose as much infantry as possible. Because at this point in the game, you don't want to buy infantry. You want to buy as many battle units as possible. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention he also he had a rocket built, which is really good. Rockets are very valuable. And another battle copter because he hasn't seen my anti-air yet. So he decided to build another battle copter. That is a little too ambitious of thinking. And secondly, his mech, it's almost an action. Day 12. When did he buy that mech? A long time ago. It's almost there. It's on this property. It's halfway there. Man, that was a poor purchase. Anyways. So, I move my infantry, and instead of focusing on capturing, I'm just going to start trading back. I'm not worried about capturing the properties. I'm At this point, I'm pretty sure I have a property lead. From what I can tell, I have 19 properties, right? And from what I can tell, he doesn't have this comm tower, and he doesn't have this property. I don't think I knew about this one. I think I knew he was capturing it, but I don't think there was a way for me to stop it, so I gave that up. So I knew that he had one, two, three, four, six, seventeen, eighteen. So I knew he had like seventeen or eighteen properties, but this lab doesn't count for funds. And I knew he didn't have these. Even though I haven't checked in the last turn, I was pretty sure he didn't have those because I saw him send these infantry towards this comm tower instead of capture it. I saw that happen. So here I'm going to get my tanks. I'm going to start trading back to him. And I feel a lot better about doing that, even though I know he probably has units in the area because I have my artillery set up. So even if he counter trades against my artillery, my uh, or against my tank, I have the artillery in the area, which perfectly kind of covered this... Um, this little zone here so I can start really hitting him with my ranged attacks. And because it's in a forest, I'm feeling pretty safe about it. And I'm going to go ahead and send my anti-air in. I didn't see his battle copter. That was a pretty big blunder. Um, I don't have any recon left at this point, which is a big deal. Um, not having a recon um, really sucks. He has a vision advantage over me. If I had my recon, I would have been able to see this battle copter. But at this point, I feel pretty good about sending it in to just attack his units because I know that I have more anti-air coming in the way and this battle copter might be able to trade to these units but my battle copter is in there my anti-air is in this area and this one's going to be moving again so it'll be in the area as well it just hasn't moved yet yeah so now I have two I have an anti-air covering all of this and all of this so I have anti-air covering a very broad area so that's going to kill the battle copter it'll get probably one more trade off um, which is unfortunate for me, but I am able to fully take it down because of that. And from then, on that point onwards, my anti-air are going to stick around and make sure that no uh, air units have any effectiveness. And here, I'm going to try and get my APC back to work. Infantry over here to capture these two. I start my capture game, and here's where my eco lead and capture lead start getting even further ahead. Here, I spend all of my money pretty effectively, a uh, battle copter and a, um, a tank and two infantry. I definitely wanted to get some more infantry at this point because I'm running low down here. And I need to get them booking. And I have my APC units so I can get some infantry back or to the right side of the map too. Pretty cool. So here he has his rockets. He moves forward. Um, I feel like that position wasn't very good though. What was his movement like? Uh, that, I would have put it on the road actually. If you put it on the road, it'll have more... I, I believe if you put it on the road, it would have been able to move 
a little bit further, you would have been able to put it on this forest, forest here and uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, if you put it right here and then moved it to this forest next turn, you would be able to completely cover this calm tower, which would have been really good and be hidden inside a forest, which would have been really great. So here he's going to trade back and try to ca capture this property. I felt like this was kind of, uh, kind of a bad move because he doesn't have many infantry in the area. He does have a tank, though. So here he discovers my artillery in this forest. This was kind of crazy. Look at this. Look at this trade. This is an artillery in the fog. This is an artillery in the fog, in the forest. And he does this and attacks it. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? Oh well, what are you gonna do? Zuri has the anti-air and he shows it, so I know that my battlecopter has to watch out for that. He does damage here to it, but he doesn't use the battlecopter against it, so he's not able to re try to recapture it, but I wouldn't even try to recapture it anyway, since I have an anti-air there of my own. He moves his infantry and tank around here to try and take over this property. See, the problem is that the resources on this map to they demand a lot of attention to try and kill the units on it, and then also capture it and retake it. It's like three different stages, all of which require a lot of resources and attacks and trades in order to regain that. And he's doing a lot of attacking and killing of the units on there, but he doesn't have enough resources to try to retake it. He only has enough to keep trying to kill them on it. So I'm able to maintain all of the benefits of being able to capture these properties and he's overextending and using a lot of resources to try to get me off of him. But I already have it, and he doesn't have one. So I'm already kind of one at this point. His mech unit's still making way. Gonna take him just a few more turns of doing nothing. And he moves his recon back here. I would have kept the recon in that forest. That would have been great to keep that there to try and trade. But um, for some reason, he didn't do that. I guess he wanted to keep it safe, which is fine, I, I guess. Um, and here he builds um, some inefficient stuff. So he has 18,000. Watch what he buys. I guess I have to skip through all the turns. He doesn't he doesn't spend all of his money very wisely. So he builds tank, recon, infantry. And he still has 6,000. So this recon... Mm, you can make an argument he needs more vision in the other areas. This tank is a good purchase. This infantry, was this necessary? Not really. I mean, building infantry and mechs can be good, maybe especially if you have a transport copter for 5000 which he could afford, but he doesn't buy, ever. Um, but he doesn't do that, so I don't think that's a very effective use of his money. He probably should have just built a whole other tank and then an infantry. Because he has plenty of money to get more battle units out. So I don't agree with any of his purchases. So as you can see, I still don't have my power, which really sucks. That's the real hard counter of Sasha. But here I'm able to get the Battlecopter finally. And here my artillery is able to protect my other artillery, which is amazing about keeping two... Having two artillery units in range of each other like this is so nice. Because then if he finds one, you can protect each other. And here, I believe I kill that. Yep, because I have 20% attack power. This anti-air just literally shreds that tank. And so, yeah, he was able to do some damage, but it doesn't kill it. I'm able to get your 9,000 battle copter and 7,000 tank, and you get almost 6 HP off a of 6,000 tank. Very poor eco trades. And from here, my APC unit. Ooh, man, best 5,000 gold I ever spent. I'll tell you what. So here I'm able to get my artillery and I'm able to put it on the city. I felt pretty good about all my units here. And because I didn't have much vision at the time, I didn't see the anti-air. But I noticed a lot of his units were mostly infantry from what I could see. I'm going to interrupt his capture, which is obviously going to be the play. But I'm not going to try to capture it. Instead, I'm going to keep this guy here to just try and trap the unit. Because I knew he was going to capture that property. Because I couldn't stop him. I'm just trying to stop him from capturing this one and this one. As many as I can stop. I don't need to worry about retaking or recapturing. I just need to stop him from, ga from gaining. Because again, properties for Sasha are way more valuable. They get more money. So here I'm going to use my low HP tank 
on the infantry, which is a pretty good trade just to try and focus to make sure he can't do anything about this property. Um, and since it was kind of low, it was like, hmm, I could send it on uh, here to heal, but I already have this on, on, on here to heal. And you don't want to send every unit to go heal. As soon as everything gets a little boo-boo, you don't want to put a band-aid on it. They can still fight. They're soldiers. They can fight. They have, they have a lot of worth. Um, and just having him here, because I knew that he was going to try to go for this property, and that's exactly what I wanted to stop. And also, his 4 HP tank, while it could do a lot of damage to me here, I had my 7 HP tank right here, and I was blocking it with infantry. So I felt good about that trade. And here I use all of my money pretty effectively. I get two tanks, and then from there I had uh, four, five, six thousand. I could have gotten another artillery, but because I already had two, I felt like I was good. So instead, I opted out to get the recon. So two tanks every turn is extremely good. Tanks are very powerful units, great for trading, and of course they have way more movement than the heavier tanks, so that lets them get to the front line quicker, um, which is very valuable, especially when you are. Uh, pretty sure that you're winning the eco lead, which I am. I'm winning the eco lead against a Sasha, which to be pretty crazy is, which is pretty crazy, to be honest. And as you can see, not only am I gaining the property lead, I'm also gaining in the value lead. I have 87,000 to her 67,000. Um, being able to kill her battlecopters shreds her value. She has three tanks, I have six. So this is the difference between buying the battlecopters between ba buying tanks. You're able to get way more tanks out, and tanks are able to do so much more than battlecopters can. Because battlecopters, like I said, they're just they just die so quickly, and it's 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 just expected. So here, as you can see, I feel awful that I decided to play Hawk because she uses her power once again and again. I don't have my own power to use, and I am a very sad bird. We're going to see her move some infantry forward. Um, what was that trap there? Oh, yeah, yeah. She tried to... So, so these low HP infantry, they're not worth anything. But they can still be used to trap and to scout. So being able to put a 1 or 2 HP uh, infantry in a forest is always a great way um, to use them. So you see right here? I, I What did I trap? Oh, look. His mech is almost there. It's amazing. Um, also... Remember that uh, turn where I said if he put that rocket in this forest, he would have had uh, this one square right here, would have been able to attack anything on the comp tower? Yeah, he could have been doing damage to my tank right now, but he didn't. It's, uh, it's a shame. For some reason, he really wanted this rocket to cover the lab. For whatever reason, he really, really valued this lab and really valued getting a bomber. See you soon. Um, but yeah, but if he made the play that I said, put it in this forest, he would have had it a turn ago, and he would be killing whatever is on this comm tower, which would have been insane value of his rocket. So he puts these infantry in the forest. I think that's a really good trade here, but this right here is really pointless because, I mean, um, he's going to see... Uh, he's going to... Well, I guess he does kill it with the anti-air, but I, I don't think the anti-air right there was a very good uh, idea. If I was in control of this anti-air, I would have retreated with it. He hasn't seen it, me build any battlecopters yet. He doesn't know I have. Um, I do have them. I haven't shown them. Um, but he would have had a much better time if he moved this anti-air in a forest. So, like, what you could have done is put this 2 HP unit in this forest and put the anti-air in this forest or uh, anti-air here uh, infantry here. Either way, you want to block these uh, two forests, and I think the, the anti-air has so much range that you could get away with putting it in this forest and be able to attack anything, but even if you didn't feel that way, you could put it here as well. Um, that would have been way better. Um, instead, he uses the anti-air for this uh, infantry, which gives me a great opportunity to kill it so that my battlecopter can start getting into the action. Um, and here, I trap him, and he does see my artillery, but he isn't quite able to kill it, which it just feels so, so damn good when that happens. Um, I'm starting to lose my voice, actually. <clears throat> oh, sorry about that. I was kind of losing my voice for a little bit. Okay, back into it. 
So as you can see, he's moving units forward and buying another mech unit. I mean, why are we buying mech units if you don't have an APC or transport copter? I've said it a million times. Is this gonna this one mech unit has still not seen the light of day. It hasn't fought anything yet. <sighs> Yeah, what are you going to do? I do think the rocket is a good decision here, though. Oh, he buys two. <laughs> oh. <sighs> well, it is what it is. So here are my artillery able to defend each other. And my anti-air is in a great spot to just completely get him off that comm tower. And here I'm going to use my infantry, uh, or kill his infantry with my anti-air, because I'm pretty confident he, does, he doesn't have any battle copters. But of course I learned that I'm wrong. But because I have two of them, I still feel pretty good about it. It's like, okay, even if he kills one, I can still get him with the other. And here I'm going to make favorable trades with my tanks. And then instead of opting to capture things, I am instead going to clear his infantry. Because by this point of the game, he also doesn't have any recon, so his vision is pretty lacking. So killing his units also makes it so he can't see um, any of my stuff, which is great. It, it really does help. The vision mind games are huge. So instead of healing this tank, I of course put it in the forest trap instead. And now I finally get to get uh, this property, which is also going to give me a big eco lead. And because of this wonderful APC, I'm also going to try to do some sneaky back capping here, which I know probably isn't going to work. But I also know it's going to delay some of his battle units from reaching this part uh, for a full turn, which gives me a full turn of my tanks being able to move forward. And I have a lot of battle units that are back here that need to see into the action. And this is going to delay it quite a bit. And if he decides to ignore it, well, that's fine. And my APC unit can start heading back and getting more infantry. I get trapped right right there, which is unfortunate. But because it's an anti-air, I'm not too worried about it. I don't know about his rocket yet. Everything forward. And here I can start to see I'm going to buy some big units. Let me get into my rocket here. Oh no, I get the rocket next turn. So here I'm pretty confident I'm going to kill this anti-air. And that's why I built uh, another battle copter. Also, because I was able to get a battle copter and a tank, I was like, okay, well, this he probably only has one anti-air. He hasn't even seen my battle copter yet, so there's no way he, he has two anti-air like me, right? Um, so I keep my battle copter, I'm playing it pretty safe, and then I'm buying another one, and I'm just going to use everything I can to kill this anti-air. So then my battle copters can do some work, and my battle copters get some insane value. One of the best things about a battle copter is that... Um, it can attack ranged units really effectively. Because uh, ranged units cannot hit back. But if uh, I were to attack a ranged unit, let's say he sent a ranged uh, 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 a melee unit like a tank into my artillery, right? Well, my other artillery can defend and help. And then I can fight back with my tanks. But if I send a ranged unit after a rocket, well, if there was an artillery here, it wouldn't be able to hit me back. And if it was a tank there, it would hit me back, but not so much. It wouldn't be a great trade. So that's why using uh, a battle copter is extremely good for trading with ranged units. So if you're able to do that, I recommend it. If it's a rocket, worth it. 9,000 battle copter to kill a rocket, like, like that's insane value. Very good trade. But if it's an artillery, it's not worth it. Unless you know that it doesn't have anti-air, or if you're able to hide it and make sure he doesn't have vision and forests and... You fully kill it or something, etc., etc. He gets a really good trade here with his uh, tank, but I actually don't like that trade. Um, he just now has his mech unit, and mech units trade even better against tanks than a tank against a tank. I mean, sure, he gets my tank, and it only takes one point of damage, but I mean, come on, it's a, your mech is sitting there. You might as well use the mech to trade with the tank for similar results, for better eco value, and then use that tank to do something else. This tank could attack this anti-air, you know? This tank is so underutilized attacking this tank. He should have just used the mech. Or did he already move the mech? Oh, he used the mech to attack that. Yikes. That mech took like eight turns and it just killed a two HP infantry. It didn't even get to attack the tank. It's just... It's just so low value. So here he gets some insane value, though. He's able to kill me with the rocket and the artillery. And at this point, I know something is up. 
And I believe I scout him out with, with my battle copter and get it, too. He's got his recon. Max. He retreats his battle copter. This was a very smart play by him. Definitely the right play with the battle copter to do that. Um, and here, very poor purchases, by the way. So, I, I cannot believe this purchase. Did you see how much money he had? He has 24,000. We're gaining like 20k each turn. And look what he buys. Infantry, recon, infantry. That's unbelievable that you would not spend money. So, you guys won't know this, but spoiler alert, the reason why he does that is because he wants to buy a bomber. Oh, God, he saves all of his money to buy a bomber. So, here's the thing. If you're looking to buy a bomber next turn, you can do that. That's fine. You know, bombers can be pretty good if you... But you know I have two anti-air. So, I mean, it's not worth buying a bomber if you know I have anti-air out there in the field. I mean, it's just not good. But secondly, if you're going to buy a bomber... Why not do it to where you can buy a bomber and some other units this turn instead of double infantry recon? I mean, this is not a good purchase. So you have 26,000. How much money will he get next turn? It's going to be an... Um, I mean, you, you get the calculator out, right? He's got 20k. He's got 18k. He's going to have so much money for, for... He could have bought other things than recon double infantry and still have had a bomber next turn if he wanted. So that, that purchase was just really... It sets him behind pretty heavily. And as you can see, I am now ahead in the unit game. Look at that. I have 91k to his 85k because of that. Um, so, yes. As you can see, I'm using my artillery first. Um, I have my artillery attack as anti-air, which is insane. Now my battle copters can get to work and free hit. He, I'm just going to keep him there to attack and heal at the same time. Why not? Get my infantry to start getting work on the capture game here. Um, the one thing that really sucks here is I let him capture this. I am able to clear this unit right here, and I'm really sad about that because the uh, it puts it into the rocket range. But I was trying to get him to go into melee range with my tank because my thought process was that I was going to be able to kill it with my battle copter and uh, artillery. But instead, he just gets me with the uh, rocket. I was really trying to bait out the battle copter because I knew he had one still. APC unit, however, I am going to use in a pretty effective way to get my infantry on top of the lab and also give him a lot of things to shoot at, which is bad. But APC unit is still kicking, baby. Hiding him in the forest, though, is very good. He's not able to hit him. And I'm just going to keep him there and lie and wait for the battle copter. Because I'm expecting the battle copter to stop this. That was what I was expecting. Here, I'm going to be aggressive with my battle copter now. Because I know he doesn't have any anti-air. If he does have one hidden still, then good for him. But I've already killed them, so I'm pretty confident he doesn't have it. Especially considering it's day 15. And this is the first time my battle copter is seeing action. So I'm pretty confident he doesn't have any other anti-air. So I'm going to finally start to send him down here. And I'm going to retreat my tank while pushing that one forward with my battle cop. Trade them out, essentially. While continually uh, moving all of my other units forward. Hiding my anti-airs both in the forest. Waiting for the battle copter to attack the mid area. And here's where I get my rocket, which does a lot of work. And I get two infantry to try and... Because uh, I knew I wasn't going to get this property. I didn't really have ways to, to stop it, really. I could have tried to gamble, but... What are the odds that's going to happen, right? But I already had the eco lead. I knew that because I had this part of the area. So I was just going to be like, well, I know he doesn't have this. And I have this. I have, the, I have more properties than he does, especially since he doesn't have the comm tower too. So I'm going to let him take that. And I can just quickly retake it back with the units that I have in the area. That was my thought process. So here again, we have one very sad bird. His rocket does a ton of damage, but I am able to trap some of his units. His mech has killed a 2 HP unit and is now on a comm tower capturing it, and it is going to die very quickly. Um, he gets rid of that guy. Uh, basically, I wasted like two or three turns of this tank, which was fantastic, because that tank could have been over here and uh, helping his rocket, but because he didn't, that makes his rocket a bit more vulnerable for me. 
And here he gets two rockets out. I do think his two rocket purchases were really good, but I think he should have put them in forests instead of on the city. And here he gets a medium tank and double anti-air. Okay, so he doesn't get the bomber this turn. He actually gets the bomber the turn after. I still think this was a pretty weird decision. Um, I don't understand why he got the medium tank and double anti-air. He should have just gotten, like, some units last turn. He could have gotten an anti-air last turn and an anti-air this turn. The anti-air would have been in, like, a forest or somewhere over in this area by now, closer to my battlecopter. But he wasted an entire turn of purchases on double infantry recon with 20k just for this turn, which isn't even that big of a spender. It's good. Medium tanks are good. Mind you, I think medium tanks are very good. Um, but double anti-air... I don't know, he could have gotten an anti-air last turn. So he goes for my property. He goes for my APC with the infantry, which was pointless. I love the APC. It doesn't die. Don't have to worry about it. And here I'm just going to keep these infantry lying in wait. Um, I'm basically just going to use them to defend these properties now and see if this tank goes forward. Um, if the tank does go forward, he'd be wasting his time because he can't capture the properties. And he has no infantry or mech units. They're all on the south side of the map. So I actually don't even have many of my forces up here because there's not a need for them to be up there. But I am going to keep them in these forests just in case I can try to ninja one of these or um, defend this property um, if I have to. So here I'm finally able to see and get to this guy. Now the reason I put this infantry here instead of a battle unit is because I wasn't sure if there was something in this forest or not. So I put an infantry in there to scout it. And here I'm able to trade exceptionally well, and already we see this six or seven day two HP infantry killing mech unit have zero value. Unless you count killing a two HP infantry worth. Which to me, not really. Seven day mech. It could have just been an infantry, you know? Like, why not? Would have saved yourself money too. So here I'm actually done with healing, and I'm just gonna keep this guy around to kill the infantry and retake this property. And now I feel confident enough from seeing his rocket here unprotected that I can move my ranged units forward. Here I'm going to continue killing because I'm pretty sure I have a huge advantage at this point, which I actually am behind in, in value very slightly. Eco, she has advantage over me. And in units, she has advantage over me. But yet I'm getting aggressive because I just, I just know I have the advantage with the comm power and the attack bonus and the unit purchases he made are rather poor. He doesn't have any frontline units now. I mean, look at this. He has two rockets, but he has no frontline to protect these rockets. So that's why I'm pushing my advantage. So he has one tank and it's here. And his medium tank is nowhere near the action. He just built it. The only unit he really can fight with is this battlecopter. And I have two anti-air already ready for it. So here is what happens when you buy really expensive units too early, is you go for the double rocket instead of the double artillery, and this is what happens. You have more units to trade with and trade effectively with because you have more attacks. But if you had the really strong big units, if you're not getting attacks out of them, they're effectively worthless. And we see it also with my APC unit, it has gotten a ton of value. It's basically made it so I can capture this whole top side of the map and he hasn't touched anything. I mean, if he had a transport copter, these mech units would have value, but they don't. Like, one transport copter would have made it so these mech units that he's built would be able to trade effectively with mech tanks, but he hasn't done that. So here, I'm using my low HP tanks on the infantry. It's just better value that way. Instead of just wasting money to heal it because it's just an infantry don't really care about it. And here I'm going to use my money on a big tank because I'm pushing and I'm I'm imagining that um, all I really need to win at this point is strong tanky frontline units and being able to build a medium tank also lets me build more infantry and I kind of wanted a bit more infantry because I knew I had a bit of a push and an advantage right now. I didn't push so much to where I was overextending because I knew that if he tried to push back then I could trade effectively with my range units as well. So I knew that this, this push was going to work in my favor. Um, even if he pushed me back a little bit, I can respond with my ranged units. So I just wanted to get some more reinforcements with uh, in the form of heavy front line. So here we're going to see... Um, I believe I get my powers soon. And here, the, the mech unit 
goes right here. Not to attack or anything, just moves off it to do nothing. So he can put this Battlecopter on the property. Now, this is a good trade, obviously. It's a very good trade. Was it the only way he was able to, to reach me? Hmm. Not quite. He could have kept the mech unit here and sent the Battlecopter over here to attack me. What was the purpose of moving the mech unit? You don't get defense as a Battlecopter, so I don't understand his intention with that play. It clearly was not a very good trade for him. The mech unit is useless. It's pointless. Um, he could have kept it on the property to try to capture it and apply more pressure, so I attack him. He could have even tried to retreat a little bit more. He could have even tried to put it on to attack the APC unit as one last goodbye of damage. It, it's just, I don't know. He didn't need to move it to put the Battlecopter there. There was no point to that. Here he does get a good trade here, but I have two tanks lying in wait that he doesn't see because his recon unit is over here. He sends an infantry unit to do one damage to my APC. Completely pointless. He could have put this infantry over here into this forest, which would have been a lot more value to try and trap. He could have tried to put it over here in this forest to try to protect his rocket. Um, literally pointless to put this infantry there to attack that APC. But I enjoy it. My 5,000 gold APC unit has blocked damage from units, transported units. Um, it's well over worth. It's it's done so much. It's, it's really the... Uh, the key to all of this. I even put it in the thumbnail. Honestly, with how good this APC is. So he moves his units forward, but as you can see, when you buy these expand, here comes the bomber. He uses all of his money on a bomber. Ooh, he now is ahead of me in unit value. So if you look at this, I have way more units than he does. Um, I I am losing on the rockets. He has two rockets over my one, and his rocket has gotten a lot of value. Um, however, mine is getting there to the fight, and it will see a lot of value soon, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But, um, I do have five tanks over his two, which is huge. Um, and of course, I also have two artillery. Uh, he built no artillery. I, th I feel like artillery are so good. I'm surprised he didn't buy any. Um, but you know, he spent all of his money on a bomber instead this turn, so we'll see how much value that gets for him. Uh, so we'll continue with the turn. And he built a bomber and an infantry. And that's all he has. And so here, I'm getting really close to my power. Really close. And I am actually down in eco compared to him. But I am making smarter purchases. Although bombers are really nice to have. And he does have a lab, which is able to... lets you buy a bomber. It just doesn't work out very well for him. Because it's better to just have other units that trade more efficiently. For example, anti-air units. For 8,000 gold, destroy a 26,000 gold. And so as you can see what happened, I used my two tanks to trade very effectively and kill his tank outright. The reason why I go in for the kill here is because I wanted to make sure I captured these properties back as quickly as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and secure the kill on that so my infantry doesn't take too much damage. And here my infantry was blocked by that tank and by outright killing it, it also lets my tank move forward so I can put damage onto uh, this guy and now start to recapture it here in a second. And then I'm able to move that guy right back to try and go back to healing status. Um, and if I do ever have, if, you know, if you have your power with uh, Hawk, it, it makes healing units and keeping them alive a bit more value. So if you heal units, um, you can basically drain the HP of your opponent with your power, and it makes healing your units a little bit more value. Like, keeping your units alive as Andy and Hawk is way more valuable than with other units because um, you can heal, and healing is really great. I love healing. It's a fun mechanic for me. And here, my anti-air is able to scout that tank out, and I'm able to get a lot of damage on it. And while this tank is not dead and he can retrade with me, I am, however, able to put it, uh, my infantry on this property which is uh, really good for me. And here I put all of my units to attack this Battlecopter, although my anti-air, see, check this out. Even though my anti-air is three health, it's still able to do so much because I have 20% attack power. Thank you, Calm Tower. I can really all thank it to this Calm Tower too. So nine HP to four, take five HP off with a, a super low anti-air who's also running out of ammo. Absolute legend. 
I don't know what to put on the thumbnail. Honestly, anti-air or the APC unit. I don't know which I loved more. Um, so I don't have my power. I don't use it. Um, and the reason why is because I used so many trades that at this point that I felt like it wasn't worth it. And I knew he was going to use his power next turn. And then after that, I would be able to build up my power because I just had so much action happening right here that I'd be able to build my power. You'll see what I mean in a little bit because this video is getting to be a lot longer than I thought it would be. I do apologize for that. So you'll see, I do get my power and I use it in uh, a little bit. And here I actually do take the gamble on the one HP on the Battlecopter because I want to make sure that he isn't able to trade back to my anti-air so my anti-air can fin uh, finish him off. And here I use all of my money pretty efficiently. I get a little bit of everything. A tank, an artillery, and anti-air. I like the utility. I like the versatility. It deals with every situation. And more importantly, these units have more movement speed. Medium tanks and rockets take forever to get to the front line. Uh, tanks, anti-air, and artillery all have more movement speed, which means I can get to the action quicker and kind of uh, create... A, a, so I keep maintain my advantage and push here. So here he tries to keep me off the city, which is great, but it also lets my tank now counter trade with his anti-air, which makes me even happier because I still have more battle copters that I want to see get into the action. And here he has his rocket still able to do a lot of damage, which I am a little sad about to be quite honest. And here he uses his 3 HP. He actually gets a little bit of value right here. He's able to finish off both of these units with his low HP units and do a little bit of damage to my artillery. These were actually very good trades for him. Um, and he's able to kill my artillery too. So those are actually all very good trades with him. Um, uh, for him, those are very good trades. And now this is where I kind of start to see that my push, um, it really was lacking here because I don't have my reinforcements there yet. One other big advantage of the bomber, I suppose, um, one of the reasons why it is good is it has a lot of movement. That is a very big thing. And so he uses his power, but look at this. He's done so much damage to me, it barely keeps me away from my, uh, from my own power. And here he uses his money to buy a tank, anti-air, uh, and infantry, which I think was a really good purchase. I think that was really good. I believe I get my power now. And I'm either, I'm either using my power this turn or the next turn. So here now I'm able to retake this property. He isn't able to stop me. And I'm able to put, uh, pursue this guy. So then I'm able to try and maintain this advantage. And I know from this infantry, by the way, that I've kept here just as a scout, that he isn't doing anything about this top side of the map. So I know as long as I just keep holding this, I can send all of my units towards the south and mid, and I don't have to worry about the top at all. That's great. So instead of focusing on three front lines, I only need to focus on two while maintaining um, a property lead and comm tower lead. He still doesn't have that comm tower. No one does, which is fine by me because I still have one. So here are my tank trades. I'm going to go ahead and go for the anti-air with the low HP tank. Not the best trade, to be honest. And I'm going to retreat some of my lower HP units, which I do think was really good because I know I have my power coming up. And I'm moving these guys to get in ready, you know, heal them up a little bit with my power as well. It's going to be huge. And here's where I finally start to get some value from um, my rocket. Uh, because right now I'm losing a little bit of my lead on the front line. But because he's pushing me back, my rocket is now going to have a lot of opportunities to do damage. Here I'm able to finish off his battle copter, and I'm not too worried about what he has coming next. Um, and here, this anti-air purchase actually comes in pretty handy. I bought it right at the perfect time. I send my recon forward to try and find where that rocket was. I knew it was somewhere. Now I see it, and I'm out of its range, which is perfect for me. This mech unit, however, is going to be hit me. But I don't care about that, because while he's fighting all of these units off, I am capturing this property and I am capturing this property, and this one is also getting really close, but this one is probably going to die. Uh, but I am definitely getting one property over him there, and this one I'm pretty sure I'm going to get as well. Especially because if he lives, and since I have a tank in the area, I can just merge them. Because I know what his range of his rockets are, I know he can't reach that either. So I continue moving all of my units forward. Let's see what I bought. APC unit, going to go back to get some more. I'm kind of doing a little bit of a retreat with some of my weaker units. So I'm able to buy a tank, 
tank and an infantry. Pretty valuable. So if you're losing on the your units a little bit, tanks are a great way to reinforce it because they have really fast movement speed and they get to the front line. It's a great way of uh, continuing your push. So in his turn, I believe we're going to start seeing the bomber do some damage. The rockets do damage here. The mech unit gets some value. His medium tank takes out my tank. But... Uh oh my rockets they're right in range and i have my power so as we can see we are moving forward um he's getting a lot of really good trades in this part of the map but i'm also uh all of my reinforcements are here and my rocket is in perfect range to take out his medium tank now and even though he's able to do a little bit of damage here i only need seven to capture it and i have an infantry right here and a tank right here to protect it and with my power, he will be 7 HP. Which is why I believe I use my power next turn. You will see here. Uh, he does pretty decent with his, uh, with his purchase here, but he could have bought an artillery instead of his infantry. Which, when you have 20,000 every turn, you probably want to spend it all. Unless you're trying to save for another big unit like another bomber, but you'll see how well that goes for him. So, it is now my turn. And as you'll see, I finally get my power on day 19. This is the worst part about being a Hawk versus Sasha. It is miserable, but I'm able to do it. And with that, I get my 7 HP back. I gain 1 HP back on a lot of units, which is really helpful because a lot of my units needed it, especially this anti-air unit and this infantry unit, which allows me to capture his property. And as you can see, my rocket does a ton of damage to that medium tank. Um, it's so great when you get big rocket trades like that. It, it's such a good feeling when that happens. This was such a good investment. And then I'm able to do my artillery attack. You kind of want to use your ranged attacks first um, when possible because um, then it breaks free a lot of the movement restrictions that your other units would have. While at the same time, um, you know, you want to basically keep the ranged units attacking whenever possible. And you don't want to move them really too much unless, you know, you can put them in a really safe position. But if they're able to attack from where they are, then you want to attack from where they are. And it frees up a lot of space in the map so you can decide where to move all of your close range units. So I retreat to a city here because Big Papa's joining the party. Uh, bada bing, bada boom. And that medium tank is gone. And now, because that medium tank is gone from that square, I'm able to push forward with my little tank. So as you can see, it was very effective. I'm going to continue my push now. I have my anti-air able to attack this bomber who is minus one HP and plus one HP for me. I love Hawk's power. I love healing. And he's one of my favorite COs um, as well. And that also breaks free and allows my battle copter to get forward. And even though my battle copter might die to this anti-air, I figured, hey, damage on a rocket, well, the more worth it, 15,000 to my 9,000 unit. So that trade is way more effective for me as long as I can make sure I to kill it so it doesn't live. And here I continue to push forward with my other units. And now here's when I start to capture these properties, and I keep this tank in the area just to make sure if there is anything over here that it will not stop my captures. Here I see he's trying to heal some units, and I'm just going to go ahead and be sneaky and do that. And now he has so many different fronts, and with that one power, I'm able to do 20% damage plus the 10%. So I actually have 30% damage because of the bonus you get from using your little power. Because Sasha messed up with her power and wasn't able to stop me from using mine, that is devastating to her. I mean, one of the big things I really want to point out too, and I'll, I'll get to it in a second... At the end of the turn, really. You'll see I have 115,000 value of units. Actually, even more after I buy things. Look at that. Look at that APC. He's going in. He's doing work. These guys are all trying to fight back, doing a lot of work there. And here, I'm able to spend my money even more. Infantry with a medium tank. Medium tank is a pretty good buy. Just try to keep this forward push going. And it also gives me infantry, because I know I can capture the properties later. So here I have 133,000 worth of units and three more properties than Sasha. And look at her properties. 69,000. Nice. 
So as you can see, that one turn made it so she was at 69, and she, what was she before? 105. 105 to 69,000 with one power and one really well-planned organized push with all of my ranged units being set up perfectly to deal with his hard-hitting units and with keeping my anti-air alive so I'm able to do damage to his bomber to make this bomber pretty much useless. Now this bomber does like no damage and the only thing that it's going to do is do pathetic amounts of damage or it has to go back to the airport to heal. That is two turns worth of not having it and another two turns to heal back up to 8 HP and then another two turns to go back out there and attack and it's not even a full hp you have to wait another turn it's just so much time that you're wasting sure the bomber is a fast unit but an expensive one and you don't get your value off of it right off the bat like that it's not good so here he gets a couple of decent trades he's able to get my battle copter but like i said before uh, the damage is done i already did a lot of damage to his rocket with my battle copter and that's what that was my goal now I'm just going to move this battle copter out of the way so I can move something else in there to kill that rocket. And now he has a full power meter, but he can't use his power because what's the point? There's no point. I have my power on already, right? You can't cancel it. So he's missing out on a 10% attack and defense that he should have right now. Meaning that his trades are not very effective. And here he sends this recon in to take this lab. And I mean, I can just bombard that guy for free. Just giving it up for free. You're delaying the lab. I don't really care that much about the lab. And here he sends in the 4 HP bomber to do some damage to my medium tank. But I got an anti-air ready for him. I knew it. I knew it would happen. 8,000 anti-air to the 26,000 bomber. The Chad 8,000 anti-air versus the Virgin 26,000 bomber. I mean, it's clear which is the victor here. As you can see in value, he's able to get a little bit of a pushback. But I have too many ranged units, so he overextends right into them. The bomber could be really effective at getting rid of the rockets, but he doesn't see it, doesn't go for it. So here, I'm able to get an even bigger trade. So here you'll see my 100,000 go uh, to his 80,000, and it's going to fire right back at him. As you can see, I'm starting to capture his properties. Bam, free trade. I take that trade every single day of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, even Saturday, and even Sunday, I take that trade. And here, my ranged units are able to kill the recon. And my 1 HP guy, I'm just going to use to block the forest. He's useless. But I don't want to give him the satisfaction of killing it. And as you can see, taking all of that free space now means that my tanks can get rid of his rocket, which was one of the biggest problems of me really pushing forward. And here I'm able to trade. Normally you don't want to trade with a mech unit, but because you have 20% attack and because your tank is on a property and you don't have any vision of anything able to really hit it, even the rocket can't hit it here. Um, this is a good trade because you don't take much return fire damage and you hit it really hard with uh, being Hawk in a comm tower. And here I'm able to capture these properties and this is basically basically where his uh, fate is sealed from that power turn. That, that If you let Hawk get his power, oh man, you are hurting. So here I'm just going to continue to move some of these ranged units uh, forward. Instead of using my rocket to kill a 2 HP recon, which is, which is very, very inefficient, I'm just going to move them forward and move the tank forward instead. And look at this APC unit, the absolute Chad. He's going forward to get more infantry. Moving all of my units forward, trying to keep all of my ranged units together so they can defend each other. As you can see, rocket and artillery can cover this lab area and then some, and the comm tower even. But I'm not too worried about the comm tower because I have two tanks in the area as well. Um, and I have a 4 HP tank, which I am going to keep. So here's another weird thing that this... Um, here I buy two tanks, which is good, and I use my leftover uh, money for a recon because I don't have one. And recons will get into the action very quickly. Um, and, and same with the tanks. And I already have two medium tanks and a rocket and a bunch of other units. I'm already feeling really good about my uh, my lead right now. So one of the things that Sasha does, which is really strange... Oh yeah, I killed that mech unit too. There's still a little bit of infantry killing here with my infantry, which is good. But here's the weird thing. Sasha has her superpower, but opts not to use it. And also the same thing with her little power. She doesn't use her power at all this turn, which is really, really, really weird. Like if she used her regular power or superpower, she would get at least some really big, like a little bit more damage on these trades and get some money. So maybe she can kind of recover. 
because her, even though she's like dwindling a little bit in the eco, her superpower gives her um, a lot of money back from these trades. And she's getting good trades. Not that one, but she was getting good trades right there. Personally, she should have put this mech unit right into this forest. So then Rocket could have hit it. But she did not do that, which is rather unfortunate. Maybe she didn't know it was there, but she should have known to check. She should have. But instead decides to do that trade. If you had your power on or superpower on, I agree with that trade maybe. But without it, you're, you miss the damage, um, you're low HP, and he's on a property, so he gets more defense. Your attack just, it just, it's just not quite there. Oh, you know what? It's even worse. Oh, no, never mind. Okay, he attacked, and he ha it says he has zero ammo, but nah, he also says he has zero health. That's a little bug. It's a little buggy. Buggy the clown. So here we see he uh, gets trapped. This is the downside of not having a recon. He has tanks that can't attack this turn. Really, really bad. He is able to get his rocket some vision to attack something that isn't a 3 HP infantry. Um, but he really wants to attack this tank right here, but he doesn't have sight of it. But yeah, he uses his rocket to attack that. Able to get his other tank to attack that. But it's only an infantry. It doesn't matter. I have so much more infantry on the way, all thanks to this guy. The Sigma male. I don't have to worry about it at all. My ranged units are perfect and perfect spot now where I can finally seal the deal on all of the return trades. So as you can see, not using that power there is pretty devastating. It could have um it could have maybe helped him get a lot more trades back. But unfortunately that wasn't the case. So here we're gonna go ahead and see all of my ranged units. Bam, our artillery takes that out. I mean it's not even a problem. Full HP artillery is not an issue. Um against a full HP anti-air because I am Hawk with 20% more attack power and it's on the road, which means it takes a ton of damage. It has no defense. Um, oh, it's glitched right now. It's 9 HP on a road, not 10. I'm going to close enough, but it's able to fully kill it. And now I'm able to push my advantage and start capturing it. So now he has to decide to attack infantry to stop the eco gain that I'm going to have even further over on him or try to return trades. Both of which are very unfavorable for him at this point. And now I'm able to finally be like, oh, okay, I can go for this comm tower. And here I'm going to play it safe by retreating and then putting an attack on him. I feel, uh, even though I have low health, I felt safe enough with my attack boost here that I can make trades like this, and I can. And I go for this lab just because I can, even though I really don't value the lab because I'm definitely not going to build a bomber from it. I'm probably not going to build um, any more air units this game too either. And my APC is just now kind of starting to run out of fuel. Man, this guy's putting in a lot of work. And here I'm going to put my infantry on the base to just make it even harder for him to trade. And this one's going to be in the forest to try and trap him. Basically, I'm just wasting his tank's time and making it so his tanks are going to not trade or attack me at all. Now I move into the forests with all of my units the most that I can. To just be as annoying as possible. Trading with him on the road is really favorable. Low defense. And this rocket is in a great position to attack both of them if he tries to stay there. And since they're on the property and forest, um, most likely not going to take too much damage. And because it's an infantry, I don't care that much. And I have more medium tanks and tanks on the way. I have a recon as well. And with this money, I believe I buy more tanks and recons. Build another medium tank. And I believe at this point, he has... One last turn before he surrenders. Just kidding. This was the turn and this is where he surrendered. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't expect for this video to go on for that long. Um, but if we overlook everything that happened in the stats, uh, I generated about 300,000 gold. My value, about 200,000 gold. Um, I killed four, uh, I killed four, or I'm sorry. I generated 300,000 of gold. I killed 200,000 about. This is all the units that I killed. And for him, or her, she generated more money than me. As you can see, she generated more money than me, which is what Sasha should do. But she only killed 27 units. She only killed 96,000 to my 190. I literally, like, did double. More than double. So yeah, 
this is why you build transport units. Um, look at the infantry difference. 14 uh, infantry versus 23. Having a... Um, and a mech, too. Having an APC unit allows for you to win the infantry game pretty pretty heavily. It allows you to win the capture game pretty heavily. And one APC unit can really snowball into having uh, an extra infantry for trades and captures when you might need it the most. So I highly suggest buying transport units whenever possible. And APCs can block, which also makes them very valuable compared to a transport copter. I'm not saying transport copters are bad. They have their own benefit of having way more maneuverability. But, you know, pick the unit you want and try to keep it alive as best as possible. Um, APC unit can stay alive a lot longer than transport copter, in my opinion. So I highly suggest that. Um, anyways, if you guys like this video, please let me know. Hopefully I'll make some more. Hopefully I can play some more. And hopefully uh, you guys also send some replays to me and I can make videos of it as well. Because I think that could be pretty fun. Oh, also, if you like this weird little thing I'm doing with our Tory gold in the bottom left corner, let me know. I don't know. I added it. Maybe something to look at, something extra on the screen for people who have problems of staying focused and paying attention to one thing at a time, have ADHD such as myself. I figured this might have been good. Maybe I could replace it with a webcam. I don't know. Either way, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment too, please. Bye-bye.